In module six, we'll be working with polynomials. A polynomial is just an expression that has more than one term. Um, a monomial is a type of polynomial. It just it only has one term. But a polynomial has, you know, even even if you have one term like a monomial, that's still considered to be a polynomial as well. But you know, the prefix poly means more than one. Uh, so more than one term. Polynomials can be named by their degree, which is their biggest exponent, um, or they can be also named by how many terms they have. So if you're going to name the degree of each individual term, um, you would add each exponent. So if you want the degree of a single term, just add, add up all the powers. But if you want the degree of the entire polynomial, just pick the biggest exponent. Standard form of a polynomial, which in many cases you can just say, you can interchange the word standard with simplest. So it's the simplest form of a polynomial is we're going to um, arrange the terms from the biggest degree to the smallest degree, from the biggest exponent to the smallest exponent going from left to right. And this table down here just shows you some examples. <clears throat> For the, on the first line, I have this polynomial here, which is 6. It's just one term. It's a 6. There's no variables. Because there's no variables and therefore no exponents, the degree is 0. When a polynomial has a degree of 0, it's referred to as a constant. That's why you know that 6 is a constant. Um, when there's one term like there is here, then that's referred to as a monomial. So this is a constant monomial. On the second line, 5x plus 9, there the degree, the biggest, we do have a variable, but since I don't see a power, that means that the biggest power is really just 1. So there we have a first degree, which the word that's used for first degree is linear, and if there's two terms, that's a binomial. So this second example is a linear binomial. The third example, our biggest exponent is a 2. We have three terms, so that is a quadratic trinomial. Those are the ones that we factor the most frequently. Our next example, 2x to the third power. It, the biggest exponent is 3, so that's going to be cubic, but there's only a single term, so that's a cubic monomial. And on the last one, the biggest exponent is 4, which does have a name. It's called quartic, but that's, that name is not used very often, so uh, for our purposes, we can just use fourth degree. Uh, and there's three terms, so this would be a fourth degree trinomial. This um, module does involve some review, so one thing we w I want to review are the rules for combining like terms. Like terms are a concept that only applies when you are adding and subtracting. And when you're adding and subtracting, in order for two terms to be like, they have to have the same variable and have the same exponent. And if that is true, that you do have the same variable and the same exponent, be sure to only add the coefficients, only add the numbers in front. So down here I put an example of that 2x plus 3x is 5x, not 5x squared. Once we start multiplying terms, that mistake is made often, and people want to add the exponents, but you, you only add the numbers in front. When we do start multiplying terms, Okay, and so you're going to go one term times another one. You multiply the constants or coefficients, the numbers in front, and then you add the exponents. At the end, make sure that you don't have any, uh, any negative exponents or zero exponents. Those need to be simplified. If you're, div um, if you're dividing terms, I, I don't have that here, but if you're dividing terms, you would uh, divide the constants or coefficients and uh, subtract the exponents. If you're going to take a power of a term, you take the power of any constants or coefficients, and then you multiply the exponents. And again, don't leave um, any negative powers or zero powers. Those have to be simplified at the end. Notice how whatever it is, whatever operation we're doing, that operation itself only gets done out in front. Okay? And then the exponents, you do one operation less. So like the, if, if you're multiplying, you add the exponents. If you're taking a power, then you multiply the exponents. Multiplying special cases. So we've worked with special cases, but we've gone backwards. We have um, factored special cases. 
So we've gone from simplest form to factored form. Here, this is if we were simplifying. If you have one parenthesis uh, with a binomial being taken to the second power, and you were to expand that binomial, it would end up looking like this, a squared plus 2 times each of the terms in the binomial plus b squared. If you had uh, something minus something else in the binomial, it'd be the same thing, but just with a minus in the middle. And then finally, something you should know, if you're multiplying conjugates, the result is a difference of squares. Now, in this module, we also now start getting into um, binomial expansion, where now we're going to take a binomial, but not just to the second power, but to powers that are even greater than that. So in order to do that, you need to be um, exposed to what's called uh, Pascal's triangle, uh, binomial theorem. Pascal's triangle is a triangle that's created through a set of patterns. The patterns are that uh, we have rows. The first row actually isn't row one, it's row zero. But uh, what happens in every row, the rules are you have to begin and end with a one, and every row has one extra number than the row above it. And in every row, the way that you get the numbers is by adding the two numbers above it. So here, the first row, we start with just the one. Then on the next, uh, in row zero, there's only a one. Then in row one, you start with a one and you end with a one. Uh, instead of one uh, number, now there's two numbers. In row two, there's going to be three numbers. Start with a one, end with a one, but now since you have a number in the middle, you have to add the two above it. One plus one is two. The next row, row three, there should be four numbers. So start with a one, end with a one, and now you have to add the two numbers directly above it. One way of remembering what row you're on if you needed to is to just look at the second number in each row. If you look down here, like for instance, row 10, and you look at the second number, there's a 10. Um, this triangle shows up on the notes. It's going to take a while to write down, so just uh, write it down whenever you get a chance. You don't necessarily have to memorize all the rows, um, even though I think it would be a good idea to try to memorize at least up to row 6. Um, I think that would be helpful. So how, how does this triangle get used? Well, when you, uh, we use it for binomial expansion, and when I grade these, uh, there should be three steps. There should always be three steps. The first step is substitution. That's when the triangle comes into place. You'll see how to substitute when, uh, when I do the examples from each day's assignment. The second step is always going to be exponent. Okay, once you substitute, go ahead and do the powers. And finally, the last step is going to be multiplication. What, binom what binomial expansion eliminates is the need to add or subtract. Therefore, it eliminates the need for like terms. So if you understand binomial expansion, you should never have to combine any type of like terms if you're doing it correctly. The next slide you've seen before, because you were introduced in, uh, to factoring into a, in a previous module, but what I've added here is a special case known as a summer difference of cubes. So if you want an explanation on any of the other types of factoring here, go to the um, go to the uh, the previous module where that appeared, which was in module three. Uh, let me see, was it module three? No, uh, actually, no. I take it back. It's module four. If you go to the module four notes, you'll see. Um, all the explanation for all these different types of factoring, including difference of squares, including a perfect square trinomial. But down here, this is the new one, sum or difference of cubes. If, in simplest form, you have a binomial, two terms, and you're either adding or subtracting, thing, it doesn't matter which one, but numbers that are perfect cubes, no numbers that you can take a cube root of, those numbers can be instantly factored by formula. The formula is going to be one linear, binomial and one quadratic trinomial. So the way I like to memorize these formulas is I the summer difference of cubes did, but just without the cubes. So a cubed plus b cubed, I would just write a plus b first. a cubed minus b cubed, I would just write a minus b. And then I know that the entire factored form can only have one negative. So, for instance, here on, um, on the sum of cubes, since I have and the negatives have to go in the middle. So, since I didn't use my negative on the first parentheses, I have to use it on the second one in the middle. On the, um, on the difference of cubes, I already used my negative, so that means um, the middle term in the trinomial has to be positive. 
the way you figure out the terms that go in the trinomial is just uh, once you know what's being cubed, the first term is going to be the first term times itself, which is, um, you know, a squared just means a times a. In the middle, it's just going to be times each other, a times b. And on the last term, it's going to be b times b. So a times a, a times b, b times b. You'll see this also in the examples. The next slide is also a repeat. You saw this previously. This is, deals with how to factor quadratic trinomials and how to do a table. You can add this to your notes if you'd like. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But you go back and look at the module for notes. I did throw in here um, some extra notes on grouping. So grouping applies to four or more terms if you have an even amount of terms. So what I did here is I, I know it's hard to follow with all the letters, but if I look at the groups, if I look at the first two, what do these first two terms have in common? They both have an A. If you look at the second group, what do they have in common? They both have a, have a D. So if I factor out an A from the first group and a D from the second group, now I look inside the parentheses. If the parentheses match, which they do, then that becomes one factor. And then the numbers that I factored out, which were A and D, that becomes another factor. If I were to FOIL what I have down here, I would end up with what I started off with at the top. Finally, uh, we get into now dividing polynomials, which there's two ways we're going to learn in this module to divide. One is long division, which you might remember from elementary school, and then the other new one um, is known as synthetic division. Synthetic means, you know, artificial. In this case, the, the way that it applies is um, it's, it's a way of doing division without using variables. It's in, in absentia of the variables. The variables aren't there. Uh, but this can only be used if your divisor is linear. Okay, uh, when you divide, it's a dividend divided by the divisor. So the number that you're dividing by, the number on the bottom of the fraction, is uh, linear, then you can use synthetic division. If you remember uh, from uh, both uh, from long division, because when you were younger and you hopefully done long division, there was a possibility of a remainder. In synthetic division, you can also get a remainder, and the remainder the remainder was significant for a couple of ways. Um, the remainder is going to tell you whether or not the divisor is a factor of a dividend. If they ask you if one polynomial is a factor of another, you look at the remainder. If you have a remainder of zero, then the, the number that you're dividing by is a factor. So that's one thing the remainder tells you. The other thing you can do with a remainder is use it for um, polynomial evaluation. If you were to evaluate a polynomial, what you're doing is you're replacing the variables of the number. Uh, and so, let's, so if I had a you know, any, uh, you know, 2x squared plus 5x minus 7, and I wanted to know what would happen if I were to plug in a 7 for x, I can also use synthetic division um, in order to evaluate this polynomial, and the output, whatever I'm going to get, is going to end up in the remainder. This is known as remainder theorem. You will see this executed uh, in the examples.